<laughs> yeah, tell Darren afterwards. So let's move on to our next question. This comes from, let's see here, which one did, we, did I finish with last time? Uh, I think this comes from Anthony Rizzi. Okay. Uh, he asks, do you honestly think that Zelda being delayed again to 2017 sometime is going to help or hurt the franchise, the NX, and Wii U sales, and Nintendo's overall reputation? So uh, we did cover, I'd say, a little bit of of this in a prior question, but this is very pointed. This is like health of the franchise, health of the NX and the Wii U, and then health of Nintendo. Um, so yeah, what do you guys got? It's going to hurt the Wii think? U. It's going to help the NX. And I... Well, I don't know the Wii U can be hurt anymore than the well, is. Well, that's true. Honest. It's but, already dead. I mean, I... I <laughs> like, I hate... Here's the thing, like, Nintendo supported the Wii U pretty well, considering its sales. Um, so, like, I know it sucks as a Wii U owner. Like, if you recently bought one, like, like the last six months, I, I know this sucks, like, knowing that the death is, this is it. You're you're getting your Paper Mario Color Splash and probably nothing else. <laughs> exclusive. Yeah. Hey, exclusive you, got ex- you got Xenoblade Chronicles on the uh, uh, virtual console yesterday, so... Well, yeah, but that's not exclusive. <laughs> I spent you an... could already pl- put your Wii. You can already put your Wii disc in and play it. I spent a lot of money on that Wii disc. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, go go on. What do you think? Sorry. I can't um, as far as Nintendo's reputation, uh, I think it can only help it being on the NX because if it's a launch title, then obviously it's gonna be in the headlines. You know. NX launches with these launch titles. Um, I think only good can come out of this because if it's delayed a bit more, that means more polishing can be done, more plans can be made about advertising uh, strategies and whatnot. Um, I think it can only be beneficial. I am not one who gets super mad about delays. I am one that likes to look at the positive side of them, and that's really all I got. I think it's a good thing. The uh, glass half full mentality, I like it. What do you got? It's good. I, I would yeah. say the problem isn't the delays. The delays are an inconvenience in the immediate sense because like, I want to play this game. Why can't I play this game next year? That's that's, <laughs> that's the issue. But uh, the the slight problem, maybe long term, I don't really know. You could turn it around. Is uh, a lack of reliability from Nintendo because you have to think yeah. that there were plans to do something with this Zelda game. I mean, it, we, had, we had the trailer in 2014, it was going to come out in 2015. Fine, that's great. You've got to have some kind of time scale to that. That's You have to have a vague idea that you can get out in 2015. You wanted more time to do extra things with it, you bumped it back to 2016. That's also fine, because you're going to you know, add, add more features, give it more bug testing, that's, that's good. But at what point did they know when they delayed it from 2015 to 16 that they were are going to have to delay it again so that it lines up with the NX. Did they have a decision at some point where they said, you know, well, the NX needs a good, you know, kick up the backside to get off the get off the starting line with a bit of momentum. Let's make sure that it releases with Zelda, Wii U, NX, whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of, they make a lot of decisions and not all of them are agreeable. In the end, we can only really say if they're good or bad decisions in like a year's time when we've played a bit of Zelda Wii U or NX or what. I, I keep calling it Zelda Wii U. I shouldn't, but that's what I was used to for so long. It's it, You've <laughs> got to play the game and digest it and say, were, were the delays um, necessary? Did they benefit the game? And if it does, that's fine. The problem is, at the moment, the delays are just delays which are currently unexplained. So... It's just, hey, you know this really, you know this thing you're really looking forward to, which you've put aside all other games. You've cleared your desk. You say, I want to play this game. It's going to come out next year. We've delayed it. We haven't said why, but we've delayed it. Into, you know, it's it could be good, but we don't know, and that's the problem. We have no information. That's the heart of the theme of this video. We don't know a thing. Yeah. No that's information. What this is. We know nothing. More information, please. That should be the title of this video. Will be Zelda Inquiries. We know nothing. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. No, so, okay, so the I love the points you're making. Like, you know, we won't know if it's worth it until we play it. Even yeah. if we play it, we don't know if it's worth it because we mm-hmm. don't know what state the game was in. For all we know, the game's done right now. Yeah, and they're just sitting on it. Um, so I that that's the thing. Like, we we don't know if the extra time's actually helping the game. Um. 
because we have no development history on mm. the team at this point. We we will probably eventually get some development history down the line. Uh, but you know, if it's simply we have it done and we're waiting for NX to release to help boost NX sales, that's something they're not going to want to go public for a long, 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 long time. Because um, that's going to create some negative press, uh, especially for people who own a Wii U. It's going to make them even more jaded than they probably already feel right now. Uh, so when I think about you know whether or not any of this is a positive and a negative, um, to me it's not even about the quality of the game, because I think quality of the game always comes above everything else. We all want the best possible Zelda game we can get. And for the most part, most of us are willing to wait as long as it takes to get it. Uh, you know, I, I would hate to think we have to wait like 15 years for a game, but if that's all it takes to make the perfect Zelda game, I'd rather that happen. Uh, but the, the problem we have here is there are some people who right now you're never going to win back without doing a lot of things right moving forward. Uh, there are a lot of people especially now that Zelda Wii U has been confirmed to be an NX title, has been delayed again, presumably for the NX launch, and that the NX is coming uh, out at a time that cuts the Wii U's life cycle shorter than every other home console before it, and on top of that, that the Wii U's, so far the only Wii U title we have coming out in the second half of 2016 that has gotten any sort of pub from anywhere is the new Paper Mario Color Splash game, which Yay. people already really weren't that excited about. <laughs> um, not that people can't get excited about Paper Mario games, it's just they keep making the sort of Paper Mario games that people aren't asking. Even if it was an amazing Paper Mario game, it's being made for the Even Wii U, was, yeah, which like is that's, it, it's, it's It's Paper Mario. <laughs> I mean, it's not a major... Like, that's like a, a title you release like between major titles. Um, it's not like, that's our holiday title. Have a good day. Uh, might as well be Mario Tennis all over again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Please, God. No. Okay, it's probably no. better than Mario Tennis. It's probably better than the, the new Mario Tennis. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not a title you make as your flagship holiday. Uh, go to it for a second. It's not a strong... Year. It's not a uh, strong... Uh, no, yeah. to I mean, I would rather see them launch a brand new IP, like launch a new IP that's unproven and waste it on the Wii U. <laughs> well, not at this point. At this, no. Yeah, I mean, last year made like Splatoon. Last year made yeah, sense. but um, this year no. You know, but now, now you know, you wouldn't release a new IP now, um, no. unless it's that Project Guard r- robot. Well, no, Project Robot. Project Guard already came out uh, with Star Fox, so Project Robot that's still TBD. Oh, please don't be like a really crappy launch game for NX. I would just like to say. <laughs> oh, no. um, it just, okay, for those who don't know anything about Project Robot, just type it into a Google and watch some of the gameplay demos of it. It sucks. It looks terrible. It's awful. It looks like a, a terrible concept for a game. It Granted, it's been a long time since we've seen it, so I'm sure it went through a lot of polish. But at least like Project Guard that turned into that, uh, I own it. What is it? What do they call it now? Star, Star Fox, Fox Guard. Guard. Yeah. Okay. At least that game showed promise, and people like that. People actually game. enjoyed that demo. Yeah. People people enjoyed the demo for it, and the actual final product isn't that much different than the demo, outside of the fact that it's themed to Star Fox. But people already liked that. People did not like Project Robot. So like, I don't know why that's even still in development. Why that? I mean, why can't it be like the, uh, what is it? The uh, Vitality Sensor. Just. Forget it exists and don't mention it again. Um, like, go go into the catacombs of all of the dead Nintendo ideas that never made it to. Yeah, release. When you That's when you interview AJ Inuma, just tell him to tell Kimishima to just never talk about it again. Yeah, no, I'll be like, but AJ Inuma. Um, so since Guard got shoehorned into. Star Fox, please tell me Project Robot hasn't been shoehorned into this. Oh, no. Please. Let me see. Let me guess. The final battle oh, is a giant mech battle no. where we have to use the gyro sensors Don't curse on our us. gamepad. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that would be so oh. bad. Let's not do that. Um, so, <laughs> bringing this back around, I, I think we're kind of in no, in no man's land right now. Uh, the Wii U has a terrible reputation as is. 
Uh, and I know if you're among certain communities, uh, you might be among people that absolutely love the Wii U, think it's fantastic, and you're upset that it's ending soon. But you need to get outside of that community and see that there's a lot of people happy the Wii U is ending because they had no interest in the Wii U in the first place. Um, the Wii U is not a very popular system and has a terrible reputation outside of people who already own the Wii U. And there's people who own the Wii U who do not like it. Um, any podcast that is not directly about Nintendo pretty much has nothing good to say about the Wii U. Yeah. And that sucks. I, I think the most positive thing I've seen them say is that, oh, hey, they launched a new IP that wasn't terrible. And that was Splatoon. Um, and obviously there's some people that really like Super Mario Maker and stuff like that. But uh, in general, they're not that high on the Wii U itself. So the potential for the future reputation of Nintendo can only really be going up. Because I think it's at, almost at an all-time low um, in terms of public reception. It's at a low it's really from weird. what I they went remember. From the Wii. Yeah, like they went from the Wii where they were like an all-time high with families and kids and everything to now it's like you say Wii U around anybody and they're like, is that just like a new like game for the Wii? <laughs> like they just don't even know what a for Wii U casuals. is. And that's... It's a very yeah, expensive paperweight. I mean, like I... Well, as an example, I work with um, elementary kids. Okay, I, I watch 30 elementary kids in an after-school program. And I've mentioned the Wii U several times. I've brought it in. And there's kids that still think that it's just like an add-on to the Wii. Despite the fact oh, I brought the whole no. console and we play games. Like, they don't... It, it wasn't marketed well. It has a terrible name. The hardware really isn't that great. The gamepad, not even the kids that I handed it to liked using it. All of them would rather use the Wiimotes or use one of the standard controllers. Um, so it just, it wasn't appealing. And this is the kids, and, like, Nintendo always tries to bring in, like, a new generation of gamers, and they always aim for the kids. And these kids don't like it. Um, oddly enough, there were, there are three kids that actually own a Wii U. I know because I have them all on my friends list, and we play Splatoon together. <laughs> yes, I'm a weird guy who plays Splatoon with elementary kids. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That is what you want to do as a teacher, man. That's how you keep your job. Um, <laughs> that's how I keep an eye on them. Oh, I know why you're tired today. Because I kicked your butt in Splatoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> why is your homework not done? I know you had time to play Splatoon. Um, <laughs> that's brilliant. Anyways. No, so uh. it, it, it's one of those that Nintendo is kind of at a point now where if you ask most people who don't own a Wii U anything about Nintendo, they're going to be like, what, isn't that that Wii thing I own that I haven't touched in years or that I sold in a garage sale or on eBay? Um, Nintendo is almost like a non-existent brand, and that sucks. Um, and I know people say, oh, but the 3DS, that's a very strong brand. The 3DS is Nintendo's worst-selling handheld of all time. So, yes, it has almost 60 million in sales, and yes, that's 22 million less uh, sales than their other worst selling handheld. So they are not going to get that extra 20 plus million to catch up. So it is going to probably end as their worst selling handheld. Um, some of that is just people like smartphones and all the kids I, I, I'm around anyways. And a lot of the adults, they all have their phones or they all have tablets. Um, so it's just, you know, they got to find a way to appeal to yeah. that and fight against it. But... Um, you know, the NX is kind of an ability for Nintendo to uh, do exactly what they said they're going to do. And the NX is not a Wii U replacement. It is not a 3DS replacement. It's a total rebranding of what they're doing. The Wii and DS eras are done. They're in the past. Nintendo did what they felt they could do with it. So now it's a new era, a new technology, and they're hoping to make it highly desirable out the gate. Um, I mentioned this earlier to Darren, and we posted about it at Zelda Informer. They, uh, one of the translations from uh, what uh, the president said, uh, Kimishima said, it, at the recent meeting was that they were going to talk about the specs and about all this other stuff about NX that Nintendo has not talked about with their consoles since, like, the N64. Um, so, like, it kind of kind of told me that Nintendo is learning from what like competitors did like guess what you want to get that 40 million plus crowd that playstation pulled in okay well they've done that so far with specs and pricing because they haven't done it with game releases (laughs) 
Get people excited um, early on. And I, I'm not saying that, like, like I'm not trying to say, oh, if you own a PlayStation 4, you're terrible. Like, I'll, I bet you most of the games you own for your PlayStation 4 are multi-platform. Um, they got you suckered in by giving you a price that was lower than the competition with better specs. And they proudly announced that in 2013. And everyone has wanted a PlayStation 4 ever since. So, like, if, say, like, this E3, the PlayStation 4K comes out and does its thing. You know, they talked about that. Say an Xbox 1.5 gets announced. And then all of a sudden, the NX, like, a month later, they hit with the press conference. They're like, look, those consoles, you don't want this. We got 16 gigs of DDR4. We've got a processor that is, like, like 12 cores or something. And we have a GPU that's on the level of a Titan X. And we're packaging all of this into a $400 box. And that's going to... I mean, that's 4K gaming in a $400 box. They, I mean, that would, that, it, there's no one out there that can justifiably say they got hyped about the PlayStation 4 that can't say, oh my God, we're hyped about the NX. You, like, cannot not be hyped yeah. about it if that was why you got hyped. So, like, if Nintendo goes after that crowd, um, then they are really resetting the reputation and resetting what they do as a company. Um, and I think, uh, if you look at what they've been doing with mobile, they just announced a, a Fire Emblem and like Animal Crossing or something like that, some sort of thing going on with uh, mobile for the next games. Um, I think that Nintendo might be recognizing that if they want to make those casual games and have mass success, they need to make them for phones. And then if they want to have successful hardware, they need to make dedicated gaming hardware for people who actually care about buying dedicated gaming hardware. Um, and the people that care about buying dedicated gaming hardware are people like us. They're enthusiasts. We love video games for video games, and we will buy your hardware if it's appealing and if it has the games we want to play on it. And a lot of casual people aren't into that. They're not into buying dedicated video game boxes. They want to buy... If, if they're going to play video games, it's going to be on a machine that does more than just that. Like, they didn't buy it to play video games. Um... Because even when I think about the PlayStation 4 and how successful it is, I don't know any, like, soccer mom, I hate using that term, but, like, any soccer mom that owns a PlayStation 4. <laughs> Everyone that I know that owns one are people that, like, are big gaming enthusiasts. Um, and I'm thinking that if Nintendo, like, they did this new committee restructuring um, and all this stuff to, like, respond to industry trends faster, the NX could be a direct response to, like, look, we screwed up. The Wii U, that should have been the Wii HD in 2010, but because we didn't have the right structure in place, we reacted way too late, and then other consoles came out and basically ate us for lunch. Um, so, like, I'm hoping that Nintendo learned from all that, and the NX gives them that positive boost into being a leading tech and a leading software company again. Um, that's my hope. So, like, I think it's... Everything we, we don't know, because we know nothing right now. This is all speculation. What My, my hopes and dreams. Um, I think that Nintendo's reputation is just so low right now that it can't really go anywhere. But Did you just say hopes and dreams? Um, That's an Undertale dreams. reference. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody. Of course you had to say it. I, 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 was hope, I was hoping it would just be an Easter egg. We wouldn't mention it out loud. Uh, anyways... <laughs> I know. I should I should have like gave you a virtual wink online. Hit, wink, wink. Don't say anything about Undertale. Um, <laughs> no. So it's it's one of those things that I think um, I just think Nintendo's reputation is just terrible right now. Yeah. And I think if you hate Nintendo now, like if you hate that Zelda is going to NX, you hate that NX is coming out next year. I don't think there's anything Nintendo can do to make you feel good. The NX could be this amazing $1,500 gaming PC and they could be selling it to you for 200 bucks, and you still would be pissed at Nintendo. Um, because the Wii U didn't get its exclusive Zelda game and the Wii U could have still had games made for it and blah, 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 blah. Whatever reason you want to tell yourself. If that's you, screw you. I don't think it matters you. what Nintendo does for you. And honestly, I hate saying this, I don't think Nintendo cares about you. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's like a mutual thing. Like Nintendo's like, look... We sold 12.8 million. That's great. We want to sell 60 million. We don't care about the 12 point. Yeah, screw us. We'll million. screw we you get. too. Well, <laughs> that's it. Like, and like, oh, they should care because that's a dwindling audience. That's all Nintendo has left. I'm like, no, Nintendo can get more audience. They just have to change their strategy. Um, and that's what I hope they're doing with NX. I hope they learn their lesson 
and they're like, look, we we have to recognize who the consumers are that want gaming hardware. Um, not who we think we want to make want gaming hardware, because casuals are not going to buy gaming enthusiast hardware. I know it worked with the Wii, but the Wii was gaming on a budget, and now gaming on a budget is done on phones. Zelda I'd Inquiries, you, the one where it's Nate it's talks it's about the NX for an hour. Absolutely. Like, like 15 minutes. <laughs> as soon as you... So I, Kind of as, as well as, as soon as you kind of give in and say, "Oh, we got loads of uh, hard hardcore audience, hardcore what's the word I was going to say, really obsessed fans." As long as you, as soon as you uh, give up and just say, "Oh, we got you know twelve, fifteen million of people who really like Nintendo and will buy anything we make," as soon as you only settle for that and say, "Yeah, that's good," you can give up. You can just you can you know not come into work the next morning because you got to go bigger you can always go bigger nintendo is a huge company you can branch out you should aim to release a console which will do exactly that and i feel with the wii u you know going with various points why it was bad why it was but no games the problem was the wii family console kind of a casual console it's a very easy thing to pick up and play that's brilliant that's that's a that's a market it's a different market to the ps3 and the xbox 360 it's a completely different uh a competition that they're, they're doing a different event they're getting gold medals in other things why am i making this Olympics? i'm not sure but it worked it was very good the problem was i'm not sure why but they they their heads were turned to sort of hey maybe we should care about hardware specs but they didn't go far enough hopefully with the nx they'll either go back to the family thing because there's always families that want to play games or they'll go for the full you know crazy spec hardware because the wii u was like it's kind of like a casual thing but it, you know it's kind of trying to do hardware yeah, it's not it's, i don't know what, 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 what is the wii u I, what is that console i don't know <laughs> i don't know what it is well the thing is i don't think i don't think they can go back to making like a family-friendly system um that's cheap and easy to understand uh because what's cheap and easy to understand is the phone you already have in your yeah. pocket that did not exist back when the wii launched like the Wii's popularity, like you know, it, it kind of you know it spiked in two thousand eight. Still, it was really good in two thousand ten. It started to sink after that. Well, what was getting really popular around two thousand nine and two thousand ten? There you go. Smart devices. Um, and I'm not saying but there was a lot of factors. Nintendo wasn't making as many games, and the Wii U was in development. Blah blah blah. Whatever. I mean, there's a lot of factors you can throw into that. But the Wii, I mean, it's still a hundred million units, so it's hard to ever call it a not a success. It's just people started moving on from it as they got other devices that let them play games also in an easy way, but do other things. And that's, that was my point. I don't think Nintendo can go back. I don't think there's a market for, for what the Wii did anymore or what the yeah. DS did. I, I, I would think say those markets are, and I think Nintendo recognizes yeah. it. They're, they're making mobile games for a reason, mm. you know, and, and these next two apps, Kimishima specifically said these next two apps are games. So they're yeah. not like me, Tomo, like they're actual games. So it's like, Okay, well, Nintendo gets it. If they want to go to that market, they have to make it for phones. If they want to also do that and stay in the hardware market, then you have to go after the people that want that hardware. And it's not... I just don't think there's an audience for a family anymore. I think they need to... They, they, need to, they need to look at PlayStation 4 and Xbox and be like, look, we see what you did. We learned from what you did well. We learned from what you did bad. And we learned from what we did wrong. And we have all these awesome IPs, and we're going to come back firing. And I think that's the only hope they have. I forget. Yeah. What was the uh, question? <laughs> if they try to go family again, I think I think the NX. I mean, I'll own one, but <laughs> uh, I, might be, I might be one of, like, 8 million that will own it. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. Just because I, I'm, that big of a, I'm that big of a Nintendo fan yeah. that I'll own it anyways. I'm part of the problem. You are the problem. <laughs> You're the entire problem. I, 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 I am the problem. I'd, I'd oh. say that, yeah, I've heard that with the... More. With the handheld games and the and the casual games, you put them on the phones. That's fine. You you put the the hardcore, the high specs, the big series, the the big Zelda games, the big Mario games, the Smash Bros. You put that on the NX with ridiculous graphics and ridiculous ridiculous processing power. That is the way to do it. I think Mi Mi Tomo is fascinating because that is that is not a game. That is that's an application which I've struggled to find the functionality for. But it's it's a kind of thing that. <laughs> They are really proud of the fact that they've got, is it 10 million downloads or whatever it is recently? They yeah, are really proud of that. Downloads. They are yep. so proud of that. The reason why is because they, I don't know if, you know, they, there must have been a conversation in, at Nintendo where they said, hey, there's like a, there's a market. 
on on the iPhone, on on Android. We can we you know there's stuff to be done there. And I you know like really is there really we'll, we'll, we'll put out into uh, non Nintendo. We'll put out Miitomo as like a test to see if there are fans of Nintendo who own these smartphones. And the fact that it's come back with 10 million of a game, which is... Oh, Mitomo's weird, but... It's not a game. It's not really a, it's it's not not a game. game at all. But the fact that there's 10 million of people who would buy... It was free. But 10, 10 million people who would download this, it means that there is scope and possibility for, you know, you release an Animal Crossing game on the phone, people will pick that up. Because there's 10 million who bought Mitomo, and that's not even a game. So there's clearly interest there. And yeah, if you just... Yeah, and there's a lot of... Uh... No, I'd on. argue there's also a lot of like Nintendo handheld games that would work just fine on a phone. Yeah, I don't think there'd be like restrictions because there's no buttons. I mean, you could you could definitely um, get around it. Just design it around the fact that it's a phone. There you go. Well, I- any turn like any turn-based game they have, yeah, would work just fine on a phone. I mean, you see Fire Emblem. Yeah, if, if you see like Final Fantasy VI on you know tablet, and that works fine. So just do more of that but with modern games and you know better graphics and that sort of thing it will be fine it is there shouldn't be a problem here i don't even remember what the question was what was the question well the question was about nintendo's reputation All right. about nintendo's reputation for the nx wii u and zelda <laughs> and I, I, you know i talked a lot about the nx i think the nx is kind of their saving grace that's that we don't know like this whole episode's been about what stuff we do not know. We do not know anything about NX, Being anything kept about Zelda in the U. dark. We are all kept in the dark, but that could be a very good thing if they are seriously considering redoing what what they do as a company. And NX to me right now represents a, their hope. Like my hope, Nintendo's hope for creating a more a different but more positive future for gaming hardware if they're going to stay in the gaming hardware game and then for zelda um i don't even know what 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 to say uh i know that a lot of fans are upset that it's on wii u and nx some are understanding some are happy because they never wanted to buy a wii u anyways and they'd rather buy new hardware that has more promise so so we hope um but it's Zelda's in that weird place, as I said before, said uh, way earlier, that if it doesn't sell well, and there's a potential it might not sell well, um, that it, the, I mean, I don't know if it's the reputation of the series that's in trouble, um, but maybe, because they've, they've done the marketing so weird with this game. Like, why are we, why was it announced in 2014, and we are basically waiting two years by the t- for us to get new information? It's, it's just weird. Weird. Yeah. If you were to pitch so, that to someone as an I, idea, I that is a terrible idea. <laughs> I know. Hey, dude, I got this sick game. Everyone wants it. It's a hot, It's a big brand name. It's called Uncharted 5. We're going to announce it at this year's E3, but then not talk about it until 2018. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Oh, it's beautiful. <sighs> I'm an investor. Have all my money. That's te- that's ten million copies sold. Right oh, that's there. beautiful, yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's what I don't get. Like, if anything, um, Nintendo has a lot of marketing. I'm hoping that like this new committee with like Reggie fils now on it, um, even though I'd argue Nintendo of America hasn't done a very good job with marketing. Uh, I don't know how much of that is NOA's problem, or if it's that Japan just told them, "Too bad, so sad. You're not getting a budget to market." <laughs> um. I think I'm hoping that with like Reggie Fizeme, who he's at least when he does public appearances, he does a really good job of marketing. That with this new committee, they learn how to market properly and really hit on the audiences that they're trying to go after. And this whole no information about Zelda U for two years is, I think, certainly hurt the reputation of the game. It's made some people worried about the game. Why hasn't it been shown? Is there something wrong with this game? Um, did Nintendo get too ambitious and they just can't do it? And all we're going to get is um, a game that they put all this time into, but they never got quite right, but they're releasing it because they spent all this money on it and they just need to get it out the door. Because uh, if we remember, Skyward Sword has been said multiple times, it started out as a game they wanted to be open world and it didn't end that way. 
Um, now, obviously, Zelda U has an even bigger foundation in open world, so I highly doubt it's not going to end that way. But what if it does? What if it ends in a way where, yeah, we've been presenting this whole world, but too bad it's all walled off now because we couldn't make it work. Um, I mean, there's there's real fear that something's wrong with the game. Uh, and that's what happens when you do not show it off for two years. You make people worry. Yeah. And some of that's justified. Look at some of the other games that got announced and then didn't get shown off for years. You know, The Last Guardian, people are excited for it, but then, like, we still don't know exactly what's going on with it because what they showed was basically what they have already showed before. Um, there was that what that one Doom game or Duke Nukem or whatever that was in development hell for, like, 15 years. <laughs> oh, um, it's a, And that turned it's, out terrible. It's a sad state of affairs where we're comparing a Zelda game to Duke Nukem Forever. What, <laughs> what, what era are we living in? <laughs> right. Right. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you for your question. It, I mean, there's, there's, a, I can go on and on about this, but I, I think that the future looks bright. 